Afternoon. Good morning, everybody. So we just opened uh, Unilogic. Let's go to the Solution Explorer. Motion drives, VFD, and double click on the VFD uh, family that we're going to use. A new line with the VFD will be added. We can change here the Modbus ID for the VFD. We can change the name here. And we need to set the communication channel to the VFD. So again, I will go to the Solution Explorer, PLC Communication, Serial Com, and on the right side, I will change my communication to a VFD. And here are the default parameters. Each time you will take the VFD out of the box, this will be the default parameters. So boundary rate will be 19,200 and parity check will be eight even one. Okay, as uh, Ophir mentioned, we can change those parameters via group 14. We press close and go back to the VFD, select the communication channel. And now we will select a specific, a specific VFD. As we said, we also have uh, the option to add uh, a configuration file to the VFD. So for that, I will select my specific VFD that I'm working with. And today we will work with the UMI 0007BE on B1 uh, series. I will double click on it, press on the configuration file. And I can see here all the parameters that I have in the VFD. A very, uh, very unique feature that we have here is a modified parameter. For example, if I would like to change a, a specific parameter and work with all uh, the defaults, I can, for example, come here to the speed control and change it from working sensorless vector control. I will change it from zero to one, I can also change, for example, the max output uh, frequency, okay? And if I will go now to the modified parameters, you can see here that I changed uh, only one parameter and we will see later on how we can download that specific uh, parameter very quickly in our uh, application. Of course, uh, you can see here all the list of uh, parameters that can be adjusted, acceleration for the, for the VFD, deceleration time. We can see here all the motor parameters that we saw that is listed on the motor plate. So we have, the, we have the power, we have the rated frequency that the motor is working with, what is the speed, uh, what is the voltage that uh, the VFD and uh, the motor uh, will use, and so on and so on. With group five, for example, we can see uh, if we will decide to work with, uh, with terminal control, for example, we can set uh, the settings for each one of the digital uh, inputs. So for example, the default for S1 is uh, forward rotation. And if I will see all the options that we have here, so I can change it to reverse rotation. I can set it to cost and to stop, for example, or I can even uh, set it to fault reset in case that I will have a uh, fault in the VFD and I would like to reset it from, uh, 
from our digital input. So just for our example, I will change it to reverse rotation and I will go back to the modified parameters and you will see that the second line was added to my uh, modified parameters. Okay. So at this point, we will continue to our uh, to our ladder, and let's see how easy it to add uh, the VFD. Uh, we already once we added the VFD, we can see it under uh, the I/O that my that the VFD struct was added. And we have, uh, we see that we will need to enable the communication to the VFD. We have an option, as Ophir mentioned, to enable a bit to read all the statuses from the VFD. Okay, so let's start. So the first thing that I would like to do would be to once power up, we we'll go to general. On first initial cycle, I would like to enable communication to the VFD. Okay, so I will use a set coil, go to my VFD struct and enable communication. I will also would like to enable the reader periodic for the statuses. So again, we go to VFD and enable periodic status read. Okay, so here, first time that the BLC would be powered, both uh, bits will be, will be set. Later on, we will see that we have two option to check that the VFD is actually connected uh, and there is communication between the VFD and, uh, and the PLC. Okay, next I would like to download the modified parameters that I have uh, changed. So we will take a direct contact for our condition and the reset coil. And that would be my right modified. Okay, and if I will go to the toolbox, write VFD. As we saw in the presentation, I have all the options for the function blocks for the VFD, and I will select VFD right modified parameters, put it here, copy my tag for the reset, and here, let's see the options that we have here. So first of all, A will tell us what is the VFD that you would like to work with. So we will press here and select VFD1. Of course, that if we will add more and more uh, VFDs, the list will be longer, okay? And <clears throat> here we should add uh, the file name. So basically it's this one, configuration file. You have the option to, to paste uh, a constant configuration file name, or you can read it from, uh, from a data table. For now, we will just write it as a constant. And we will add status to our command. So let's call it status modified. Okay. So this is my first function block that I'm adding. Um, at this point, I would like to add a run VFD and, uh, and the stop VFD commands. So again, I can take, I can add the condition. Okay, and this will be run VFD. And again, going to the toolbox, 
We have here VFD run frequency mode. Okay, again, A will indicate for which VFD would you like to run. Okay, and what is the frequency that we would like uh, to run in? Again, it can be a constant and form a tag. At this point, let's edit it from, from a tag. It will be frequency run VFD. And here at C, we have the option to select the direction. If we set it to zero, it will be forward. If it will be one, it will be reverse. Again, it can come from a tag or a constant. We can leave it in zero. And of course, add the status. And add us run VFD. Okay, so we enabled run VFD. Now we would like to stop the VFD. Again, I will add a condition here. It will be stop VFD. And again, go to the toolbox and select stop VFD. Again, A will be selecting the specific VFD that I would like to stop and add the status. Okay. This point, let's continue to the to the HMI and configure our um, buttons for uh, writing modified parameters, a run VFD, stop VFD, and we will also add an, a numeric box to to add the the frequency that we would like to work. With. So double click on button. And the first one we go to is action, add an action, set bit, and our tag will be write modified. Let's change the description. We'll call it write modified parameters. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, let's add a second button. And that will be our run VFD. We'll go to the properties window, add an action, run VFD. Let's change the color to a green one and also change the description run VFD. Okay, let's add a third one for stop. Go to the properties window, add an action, stop VFD, change the description, and also change the color to red for Okay, uh, we need to add also a numeric box for, uh, for our uh, running frequency. So from the toolbox, we we'll go to numeric elements, double click on numeric box. Let's place it in front of the run VFD. Okay, and I will, from the properties window, I will disable the run only because I would like to edit the parameter and link it to our frequency that we are going to work with. I will just change the format here since the VFD frequency resolution is up to 100. I will add two, numeric, two <clears throat> decimal point location. 
And after text, I can write health, and we can also add a nice label. So from the text element, we'll take a fixed text, and we can write set frequency. Okay, so at this point, I would like to download um, the application to my PLC. So let's go to PLC, press download, and we will open uh, VNC Viewer. Okay, we just finished the download. Okay, we finish the download and we will see, we'll check in online mode that uh, our VFD is connected, is on to verify that we have communication between the VFD and the PLC. Okay, finish the download. I will open a VNC. Okay, and let's press on one. I will set here frequency that I would like to work with. Run VFD. And let's go online mode and see if our VFD is connected. You can see here that the enable communication bit is on, VFD is connected is on, and enable periodic status read is on. Okay, let's take it down. And at this point, Let's stop the VFD and let's add reading statuses of the VFD, okay? Because I want to make sure that my VFD is running. So I will add a numeric uh, boxes. One will be for the actual frequency that the VFD is, is running, okay? So I will keep it in read only because I'm just reading the frequency and we'll go to the tag that it is, link it to the VFD that we are working in, go to status and link it to output frequency. Okay, we can add here hertz as well. And of course, change the format, okay? And a second numeric box will be for the motor speed. So we'll add a second numeric box and let's link it to VFD status and motor speed. We can write here RPM. And of course, we can add uh, fixed uh, text. 
And right here, running frequency. And also motor speed. Okay, let's download and start our uh, VFD and see what the parameters. Okay, let's open the VNC. Start run VFD, and you can see here the running, the actual running frequency, and in parallel, <coughs> the motor speed in RPM. Okay, once it reaches 20 Hertz that I set here, now I would like to change it. Let's write 30, for example, run VFD, and you see that the frequency is changing. Now, in addition, I would like to show you that I also have the option to change uh, some of the parameters that we saw in the co configuration file. So for example, I would like to change the acceleration that the changing uh, speed will be much uh, faster. So we go back to the application. Let's go out of online mode and add Okay, we will add a condition. And this one will be change acceleration. And again, we'll go to the toolbox, right here VFD. And I will select VFD right parameter <clears throat> direct, which is the most fastest way. Again, in A, I will select, which is the VFD parameter that I would like uh, to use. So I will go here to VFD one. I know that changing acceleration is under basic function uh, group. I will select it and I will select here ACC time one. And here I just need to add uh, a value. Again, it can be a constant or it can be a tag. Let's edit as a tag, so that will be acceleration time. And of course, add the status to our command. And let's go to the HMI and also add a button. We will call it change ACC and also add an action, change acceleration. And of course, we need to link it to a numeric box for the value. So from the properties window, we will disable the read only and link it to our tag, which is ACC time. And I know that the acceleration time is in uh, tenth of a second. So I will just change the location of the decimal point. And let's download it.
okay, we will, we will start and stop the VFD and change the acceleration time and you will see the effective. Of course, this value also can be can be read from our uh, from the VFD status. Let's go to our VNC. Stop the VNC, the the motor, and let's change our acceleration. Let's make it a very fast one. One second change acceleration and start the VFD. And you see that in one second, um, the VFD reaches the, the frequency that we, that we set. Of course, the acceleration time is, uh, is calculated according to the max frequency in our configuration uh, file. And just for show you the differences. Let's select a very long acceleration. So 100 seconds, for example, we will write it and start the VFD and you see here the difference. So basically, I changed the acceleration time to 100 seconds and you can see here that the VFD is taking the time to reach it. Okay, thank you very much at this point. Okay, thank you, Alon. Uh, as you could see, programming our VFDs in Unilogic environment is very easy, very intuitive. As I mentioned at the beginning, our VFDs are also supported in VisiLogic, which is the programming environment for Samba and Vision Series. Just to point, we didn't show you all the functions of the VFD, but you could see here from the toolbox, we are supporting more functions like jogging, running in torque mode, resetting faults, activating auto-tune, reading and writing parameters, and even reading and writing the configuration files. I would like to thank you all for joining us to this webinar. I hope that you found it very interesting and informative. Thank you again.